shines onto the people of the heavens just like the stars shine out of the to 
your parents. It's as powerful, as strong of a command as believing that there is no God but Allah. And so that's why I repeat it. Things that are cliche, things that we hear a lot, are cliche for a reason. We hear them a lot for a reason. Because it's a very, very, very big deal. And it's very, very important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes in the Quran as such. The only thing separating believing in one God and the parent is one. What being one thing? What being one thing? And he even puts the word one thing in front of the Hassan here to make the word Allah and one thing closer to each other. That's how important it is. That's how important it is. That's why the Prophet says, Live Allah fi yudhul wali day, wa sahat Allah fi sahat wali day. That the pleasure of Allah is only attainable through the pleasure of the parents. And the displeasure of Allah is only attained through the displeasure of the parents. It's souls, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this multiple times in the Quran. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, besides the verse that we mentioned, so many, so many verses, so many ahadith with the Prophet you know the person who came to him, and uh, multiple stories of people who came to the Prophet and said, I want to come to jihad, the Prophet says, what to them? What does he ask them when he says, you know, they say, we want to come to jihad, this, that, 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 what does the Prophet ask them? Seriously, I mean, I know he's retired now, this is famous. What does he ask them? What? Yeah, exactly, you have any parents. And if they say, yeah, we have more parents who they need, you know, care, they need us to look after them, what does he say? Make it very simple, make it torment. Give me like a movement of your mouth to make sure that you're not like sleeping with your eyes open. Okay. okay. He says, make sure you take care of your parents. That's more important for you than even you have. If they get older, if they get annoying, if they get obnoxious, if they get in your way, if they tell you you can't do this, you can't do this. I know some of us here are maybe in our early 20s, late teens, okay, yeah, well, you know, I'm a man, I'm a grown woman, I don't need my mom telling me what to do, I don't need my dad telling me what to do, if I want to hang out with my friends, I want to hang out with my friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, when they do that, you can't even say, what? Uf, and uf is a metaphor to mean that you can't even have body language. You can't even, having body language with them, it's, it's, it's in the same way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having body language with them is just as bad as associated part of the Having body language with you. And I'm 26. I'm still guilty of it. I'm, I'm the first one to call myself out. Right? When your dad tells you to do something, you know, you're sitting upstairs, you're on the maybe you're doing something good, you're not even doing bad things. You're just, you know, doing your you know, work for school, you got a research project, you got a lab, you got whatever. And your parents call you, you know, they're not even seeing you. You know, it's just you and yourself. And you kind of just go, like, man, or whatever. That's what I'm saying. That little thing is just as bad as a social department. It's just as bad as associated part of the Prophet. And the Prophet says regarding this verse, Big bus, right? So they go to him. He's 
companions, his brain companion, wrote to him. And everybody knows about it. Everybody knows he's really, really good. He fasts even on his days that are to fast. He prays for him. He's always the first one to bless you. He's always in the front row. He's always this. And they go to him and they say, Ya Alkum, Qul La Ilaha Illa. And he would start to open his lips to say, La Ilaha Illa. Absolutely nothing would come out. And they would try and try and try. And so they went to the Prophet and they said, Ya Rasulullah, this is al Allah. Everybody only knows good things of him. And he can't even say, La ilaha illallah. He would try to get to La ilaha illallah. He's open his mouth and no words are coming out. And so the Prophet asks, Does he have a mother? And so they said, Yes, she's this old woman, you know. Can't really walk that well, he wants to get her for you. And so they said, he said to Allah, I said, I'll ask her, I can come to her, or she can come to me. They went to her and they said, You're the mother of Adam. She said, Yes. And the Prophet is wanting to speak to you. I'll leave you go to him, he can come to you whatever is easier for you. And she said, Fidaka Ali will open your eyes for you. I'll give up anything. Of course, I'm going to come to the Prophet, I'm not going to make him come to me. And so she went with her king and she walked to the Prophet. And the Prophet told her about the situation of her son Alpha. And he told her what was happening. And his mom said, the mother of Alpha said, Yes, it's true. He was an unbelievable man. And he is like everybody saw him. There was no, he wasn't a, he really did pray. And he really did pray to him. He really did fast. And he really did give care. And he really did do this and do that. He was always the first one. But Ya Rasulullah, he disobeyed. He wasn't good to me. Actually, in the hadith it says, that she said he preferred his wife over me. It says two things. He preferred his wife over me and he disobeyed me. And so the Prophet said, Bring me some wood so that we can make a fire. And so the Prophet made this fire. And he's saying this in front of the mother of Al Qur'an. He's saying his companions, pick up Al Qur'an and throw him into this pit. And obviously, the Prophet is trying to teach the mother of Al-Qa'am something. Allah knows best, he wasn't really going to throw al in the fire. And so his mom, she sees this, what are you doing? Why would you throw him in the fire? Why would you do this? And he says, وسلم, the fire of this life is better for him to be punished by it than the fire of the hereafter. The fire of this life is easier for him than the fire of the Jahannam of the hereafter. And so she said, Ya Rasulullah, O companions of the Prophet, O angels, O jinn, O everybody who's listening to this, be my witness that I forgive al -Qama. And they went and told al qama say la ilaha illallah, this man that had been pious. Say la ilaha illallah. And the last word out of his mouth before he met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. What held him back this, this amazing person? That's how important it is. That's how important it is. That you can do whatever it is that you want. At the end of the day, if you're bad to your business, it doesn't matter how much you do. Allah is saying it's just as important as believing in one God. It's just as important as believing in one God. Now the question is, this is a little bit advanced, we're all a little bit older. So I'm going to ask you a question as to why. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it such a big deal? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Why does he say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they ask, Ayy al a'bali akhtar, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, As-salatu li waqtiha, wa birru al-walidayn, thumma al-jihadu fi sabirillah. Now which are the best of actions? He said, praying on time, being good to your parents, and then, jihad fi sabirillah. Why does he say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known a smaller word than both, he would have used it. And that if the person is good to their parents, then let them do whatever he wants about to do. Why is it such a big deal? It's because, and this is the point, which I'm almost done. Way of making promise to end early. Right, okay? You acknowledge that, inshallah. Ten more minutes, inshallah. So this is the, this is the point. This is where I want you guys to pay attention, inshallah. This is a little bit advanced. The point of our religion, the point of Islam, okay? And maybe you've heard this a couple of times, but if not, to make it the first time, whatever. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this religion to create the most ideal as humanly possible world as possible. That's also very redundant. The point of our deen is of our religion Islam is to create the most ideal as possible world. And in order to do that, 
you have to have as close to ideal as possible societies. And in order to do that, you have to have the most close to ideal as possible families. Everything starts with the family. If the family unit gets corrupted, right, everything else goes to Jahannam, okay? Everything else gets messed up. If the family unit is messed up, it's, it's, it's because it's all part of this chain, right? The family unit is good, okay, what is the society? It's a group of families, okay? What's the world? It's, it's a group of societies. What's a society? The, families. the root of everything is the family unit. If that's messed up, everything else will be messed up. And there's research, okay, in peer-reviewed journals, for those of us who are more academically inclined, okay, this stuff is for real. They did research for people who ended up abusing drugs. The, among the number one risk factors of those who are addicted to drugs is being raised with one parent or being raised in a household that's not stable. Okay? Amongst one of the biggest risk factors for teenage pregnancy is being raised in a household that's not stable or being raised with only one parent. Basically being raised in a household that's not stable. Amongst the biggest risk factors for those who end up going to prison, guess what? It's the exact same thing. It always comes back to the family unit. We don't even sexual knowledge tells us that. And why do you think our society is so horrible? I'm talking about America at large. Why do you think it's so horrible? Why do you think our rates of teenage pregnancy, our rates of murder in this city, our rates of our rates of our rates of uh, drug addiction, you know, are, are so bad? It all starts with the family. Because the family's messed up, everything else gets messed up. Because the family goes wrong. Everything else goes wrong. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such a big deal. Because obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. He's the one who created us. He wants the family to go right because he knows this is the root of the problem. Okay? There's a famous American poet who said, if you know this, you should have known it. Okay? You realize why. They got a, instead of war on poverty, they have a war on drugs so the police can bother them. Anybody know who said that? That's good. You don't have to know it. The point is, the point is that for whatever reason, okay, our societies, when they try to address problems, like the war on drugs, right, they do what? They address the, the, the branches of the problem, if you will, not the root cause. Why do people get into drugs in the first place? Most of it, people who sell drugs, is because they're really trying to make money. I mean, you read the book of Malcolm X, right? That's why, you know, he was poor, he needed to make money. He a lot. So they don't attack the root of the problem. They don't attack the root of the problem, maybe for drugs, one of the roots of the problem, okay, is, is poverty. So instead of just saying the war on drugs and arresting every single person when they find drugs, let's try attacking it before it even starts. Let's fix the poverty problem so that people will have to sell drugs, will have to buy drugs. And so how about our deed is the most practical deed. Our religion is the most practical religion. The reason why our sisters are wearing hijab, the reason why our brothers should be wearing hijab as well, not necessarily the same hijab as the woman, but covering ourselves, dressing modestly, not showing our aura as well, is because our deen is so practical, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows these things about us, knows that there is lust between genders and these, these desires. So it's not wishful we thinking, oh, you know, just try to keep your, you know, just try to think good things, don't think, no, no, no. Allah says, sisters wear hijab, brothers just modestly as well, there's certain rules. We attack the problem practically. And this, Allah, is our solution, not just to the new but this is our solution to the world. Is fixing the family unit. You do that and everything falls into place. And now when you hear this ayah again, you realize why it's so important. Why it's so on the level of believing in one God. He said, he'll be known as a waste of love. His name will be the waste of love. 
This guy wasn't a companion. He, never saw, he was alive at the time of Prophet but he never saw the Prophet So when Umar ibn Khattab was Khalifa, every single group that came for Hajj, he would stand and he would say to the people, Is there anybody amongst you called or by the name of Qais al Qarmi? Until one time a group came from Yemen. And he asked, and they said, Yes, there is this man. But you know, he's a, he's a man that nobody was twice yet. You're a man of the you're the leader of the nobody knew what I'm talking about. He's up there, he's taking care of our goats, our camels. He said, Bring him to me. And so he brought the waste of Qarmi to him. And he said, the Prophet said that if we see you to ask you for your du'a, because your du'a is accepted. To ask you for your this is Umar al-Khattab. And we all know Umar al-Khattab. Asking this random guy, it wasn't even a sahabi coming all the way from Yemen. It wasn't even actually worked the work of Hajj. He was taking care of their camels for du'a. What was his story? What was his story? You tell me. Anybody know? Why is it funny? Go ahead. So, did everybody hear his sister? He, he, I mean, I just, this, this, I can't even like fathom it. Like, I would, I would just dream of Paul Sussman. Nonetheless, if you're alive at the same time, I mean, you would go to England to see Paul Sussman. But he, for what seeing the <coughs> he said, I'm going to stay with my mom because my mom is taking care of me. And it was such a big deal in the eyes of Allah that Allah informed through Jibreel the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this night. He really never saw him. There's a hadith, there's a hadith. Actually, what I did before this talk is I went to go search this. I got goosebumps talking about this guy. Well, I did just look at this because, you know, it sounds kind of like, cra not, not crazy, but it sounds kind of like almost magical, right? So I'm like, you know, because there's a lot of stories in our deen, unfortunately, that are made up. A lot of people just for the sake of having an audience to make them up. You know, some things that we won't get into. But some stories that are really famous are not, that have no authenticity with them whatsoever. This story of, 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 of Plenty of authenticity. You have multiple people narrating this story. And it you know, goes on to say that this man, you know, I love story, I'm actually actually not mentioning. But the point is that this story is authentic. SubhanAllah. And Allah SWT informed the Prophet of this man because his position was so high because he took care of his life. And so you realize, guys, that when we start doing these things, and we're not little kids, we want to talk about little kids, I'll take care of your mom. But obviously, we know that. We know that. But I want us to understand that when we do these things, you know, look at the bigger picture. When we keep our family together, when we go to our dad and we take care of him, when we come back from work, you know, we ask him what's up, when we communicate, when we when we try to set up family time. I've tried doing this a couple of times, still not working, but keep trying, inshallah. I say, you know, Baba, after Baba, let's sit down, we're all here. You know, tell us something about like a, a hadith or something. Let's just sit down as a family and talk and communicate and get to know one another. Because unfortunately, the society that we live in, I promise you, I mean, soon, inshallah, the society that we live in, if you honestly look at it, it, a lot of it advocates against this. And, and even in kids' shows, all right, so-called kids' shows. Miley Cyrus, I don't really consider her a kids' show anymore, especially. Anyway, point is, you turn on the Disney Channel, right? You turn on the Disney Channel, okay? And like in almost all of the shows, you know, sometimes, I just got off from the, uh, in the hospital, uh, doing pediatrics. Sometimes I get bored with all the patient rooms, so I'll watch the same like, show that the kids will have to I'm about to talk to the patient. Point is, I don't want to talk about this. I do know, that's not why. The point is, I'm in there watching a the show with this kid, and like multiple times you see these shows, and for those who have never seen this, you probably can relate, right? Always like the attitude towards the parents in these shows, and the cartoons for that sake. It's like the parents don't know anything. Is that it's not, I literally, I literally believe when I was younger, like, I grew up on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network or whatever, I literally believed that it wasn't cool to, to be good to my brother. Like, um, I wasn't inherently, innately annoying. Like, that's just what God created brothers and sisters for, is that they're annoying. And uh, that's really, you guys agree with me or not, if you turn on the shows, that's exactly what you see. And it's no wonder society is so corrupt. Because when none of us get to know our, we don't even know our families. When we know what our friends' birthdays, we don't know our parents' birthdays. When we know our friends' favorite food, but we don't know our brother's favorite food. You know? It's just so twisted, it's so backward. And we see why the rates of, of, of rape and teenage pregnancy and, and violence and murder are so high. It's because this family unit is dysfunctional. And this is why the process makes it such a big deal. This is why he talks about what's happening. Because he knows, if you guys fix this, everything else works out. You fix the family, everything else works out. And then, inshallah, with a short poem. I'm no Shaykh Abdullah, but I actually feel kind of, it sucks that I have to follow up Shaykh Abdullah, inshallah. But here's a little humble poem, inshallah. The first time I read this poem was a couple years ago.
years ago, but then I looked it up again uh, a couple weeks ago, and I did the mistake of looking it up at work. And Wallahi, once I read this poem, I just like my eyes started tearing. I don't I don't cry for a man, but my eyes did start tearing up, right? And right after I read this poem, I just sent my mom a text. I love you. You know what I'm saying? It was just a pound. And actually, this poem, some of you, some of your parents probably know it. You used to teach them this poem in schools, depending on where your parents grew up. The poem goes like this. It's a metaphorical story. Okay. Okay. Take care of your younger siblings. 
I know sometimes it's obnoxious to take them with you with your friends, but they feel so cool. You know, a lot of you make them weak. If you take them with you, your, your friends are making out, you go out to eat, whatever. You know, you're annoying little, whatever, 10 year old, 9 year old, whatever. Take them with you. Take them with you. You will make them, and don't treat them like crap, okay? Take them with you and treat them properly, inshallah. Okay? I swear you make them, you make them up, not their weak. Oh, I went with my brother to this, and you know, so cool, we hung out, we went to this place. Big adult restaurant, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, so take care of your family. Take care of your family. Because realize when you're doing this, you're helping to make the most close to ideal as possible world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for us. And last thing I will say, we'll end here, inshallah. Is that some of us, upon hearing this, we may roll our eyes and say, Yes, but my parents are very hard to please. Yes, but my parents you know, are so difficult. Or, you know, no matter what I do, it just doesn't seem to work out with them. And I'm just here to tell you that there is absolutely, absolutely no excuse whatsoever. Number one, number one, because Allah subhanahu wa says, La
None of our parents will listen to us. There's absolutely no excuse for us not being good to our parents. There's absolutely no excuse. I mean, I don't care how hard they are. The reason why the reward is so big is because sometimes yeah, it is, it is, nobody said it to the Okay? But inshallah, we ask Allah to make it for one souls who are good to their parents. And in that vein, inshallah, I mean, look, I mean, you're yelling and looking at your clock. I mean, that's like two indications that I should stop on cue. This is the end, inshallah. Last thing is an action item, which has nothing to do with me talking, it has to do with you talking, inshallah, and, and then we're done. We have what? What time is it? We have five minutes, inshallah. So, the last thing is I want us, inshallah, to, to, first of all, some practical ways of how to be better to your parents, how to be better to your family. Number one is something that you might think is unrelated, but it's to pray. It's to make sure you're praying your five prayers on time, no missing fajr, no missing <coughs> okay? And you might say, well, this is a lot of people do your parents. If you don't pray so long, I'll tell you this based on the story of was younger and stupider, okay? When you don't pray so long, I don't care how hard you try to please your parents, your parents are going to be Allah will not give barakat in anything. Abu Huraira radiallahu used to make, he would pray a third of the night, his daughter would pray a third of the night, and his wife would pray a third of the night. So that way the entire night, his household, there was all the salah. So we have to make sure that we pray. And the Prophet says that the household in which Quran is read, in which there is afkar and prayer, it shines onto the people of the heavens just like the stars shine down onto the people of the earth. So we have to make sure that we pray so Allah subhanahu wa gives us barakah and also in that vein as well to make dua to them. Right? The Sayyid Ibrahim alayhi salam, his dad was the one who made the idol, but despite that, he made dua for his dad. I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Pray. Pray for them, pray in general, pray your salawat, Allah will give you barakah. Inshallah, make it much, much easier for you to get into that. Number two, inshallah, is to communicate, inshallah. The reason, the reason why Yusuf alayhi salam was Yaqub's favorite son, one of the reasons, okay, besides that he was beautiful, I don't know that you can favor based on beauty though, but the point is, Allah makes it a point to mention in the first couple of verses of Surah Yusuf. What does Yusuf alayhi salam do? He was he had, he, had a, he had a dream, right? He had a dream. How many of us have a dream to go to our mom and dad and tell them about our dream? Or have something happen at school, or have something happen in our lives and talk to our, actually talk to our family or our siblings about it. Follow the example of Yusuf Ali, he said. Right? Right? I saw this dream with the moon and the stars and so on and so forth were doing sujood to me and, you know, so he communicated, keep a lot of communication open. Make sure we talk to our parents. If you have to force it, okay, inshallah will be easier at some point, but there has to be a lot of communication. But you have to talk to Osama. This is a problem that Osama has been coming to me a lot and telling me the way it comes to you. But seriously, talk to your siblings, talk to your parents, inshallah. And finally, inshallah, it's kind of cheesy, but I like it. I did it. You know, I, it went well, so I think we should also do it, inshallah. Think of one action item, inshallah, that in the next week we'll do. Uh, you know, I'm assuming you can all drive, so that's honestly taking your mom out for a date, shop, well, honestly taking her out for a date with her. Uh, you know, cleaning the kitchen while she's asleep, waking up, she'll find the kitchen clean, inshallah, buying her a nice gift. Uh, I'm just cleaning the stuff off the top of my head, okay? I won't tell you what I did, because it's just cheesy and embarrassing, but, but we have to think of something this next week, inshallah, to help kick this new relationship off, inshallah. And I want us, if you guys have ideas, inshallah.